Zool is exactly what it sounds like. It's a big dick. It's a wrench. We are your tool. Use us as a catalyst in your process of finding out whatever it is you need to find out or whatever it is you're trying to achieve. This aggressive in-your-face stance was not meant to give some sort of edginess to the project, but served as a cover-up for a deeper ideology, hidden under the layers of profanity and obscenity, a challenge for an orthodox mind. To truly understand the meaning of Tool's work, one has to be willing to dig deeper. Tool is a commitment, a trip that we will begin with Undertow. Co-producer of the album, Sylvia Messi, gave up a chance to work with Prince in favor of Tool, as she realized that this band was important and Undertow would be their breakthrough record. Sylvia had a significant effect and creative input into the recording process of the album. She knew that Tool was a great live band, so her goal was to keep that same energy on the record. During the first recordings, she let the band do what came to them naturally. However, as the writing process went on, Tool were getting stuck with some songwriting challenges. So she stepped in as a tiebreaker. Her role, however, was not to change their music, but to enhance it. Some of the suggestions she gave were accepted, some were not. Keeping and using Maynard's heavy breathing on the recordings was accepted by the band. So was Messi's idea of buying two upright pianos that were later hammered away and shot it from a shotgun to a click track. We can hear the results of this process on the most experimental and dissonant right? closing track of the album, titled Disgustipated. However, her suggestion to decrease the length of the opening track, Intolerance, was met with less enthusiasm. On the same track, Adam Jones used a vibrating Epilady hair remover to achieve those wild guitar noises. Also, while recording for this album, Jones was playing through a vintage 1976 Marshall Super bass head, which played an important role in his distinctive guitar sound, and to prolong its life, he stored it in the fridge when not recording. Drummer Danny Carey seemed to have been fascinated with sacred geometry already at the early stages of Tool, though it's unclear if he applied this ideology while playing on the record, he had a pentagram on the wall behind him while recording at the studio. Perhaps the setup of his drum kit was based on sacred geometry principles. Majority of Maynard's vocals were recorded with the microphone AKG C1000, an unusual choice for vocal recording, but it worked best with Maynard's voice. C1000 is a condenser microphone, so it's naturally quite sensitive. Regardless, Maynard recorded handheld due to his animated style of performance. For this reason, the microphone had to be wrapped in foam and duct tape to reduce the handling noise. And for the more intimate passages, microphone Neumann U67 was used. But voice recording troubles didn't end with just the gear choice. In one of the recording sessions, Maynard struggled 
to deliver one of those 10 second screams. So Sylvia told him to go outside and run around the block 5 times. This made Maynard furious. But when he returned to record after the run, his best vocal takes were delivered, thanks to the genuine anger and frustration in his voice. Bassist Paul Demore as well had a unique approach to his instrument. He had more nuance to his playing in comparison to a more conventional bass player. He also used techniques that are usually applied to a six-string guitar. The tone and his overall outstanding performance really shine on this record. However, even prior to the recording of Undertow, Paul wanted to switch to a guitar, his original instrument of choice, and hire another bass player instead. This caused some friction within the band during the recording period as the other band members did not share his point of view. Other recording difficulties came with the technological limitations of that time. The entire recording lasted for two months. Several live takes of each song were recorded and the best parts were edited together. It was a tedious process on analog tape, as Sylvia had to literally measure the distance between the kick and the snare hits on the 2-inch tape and edit tempo fluctuations out of the drum track with the razor and tape pieces back together manually. Today, this type of drum editing is fairly easy to do digitally, but back in 93 it had to be done the hard way. This recording approach helped Undertow become a very raw and emotionally driven album that was also influenced by where its creators were at the time of writing that material. That period spent from 1987 to 1993. Hollywood is where Maynard James Keenan realized that entertainment industry was full of hypocrisy, something he learned during his time as a set constructor. Superficial and self-consciously decadent, hair metal scene of Los Angeles added even more fuel to the aggression and themes of the album's music. LA metal scene was dominated by these poofy-haired idiots, and Tool wanted nothing to do with them. So. They invested themselves into the thriving underground scene of LA that felt more worthwhile. Part of that movement earned them a guest on the record. You would make me destroy myself. In order to survive you, I must first survive myself. And I can sink no further, and I cannot forgive you.
Her metal scene was soon removed from the spotlight by the grunge movement that Tool had somewhat more in common with. Both were more aggressive and expressed alienation in their lyrics, but grunge lacked Tool's complexity and nuance, both musically and lyrically. And while Tool had a considerable amount of technicality to their music, very much like grunge, they managed to infuse each track with a hook that made their efforts more accessible. More importantly, grunge has gotten so huge that it became a big part of pop culture, and leading faces of the genre became the center of attention. A cult of personality was very much present in grunge, as much as in any pop culture phenomenon, something that Tool protested by not appearing in their own music videos. However, due to the pressure from their record label, Tool members had to make an appearance in their very first music video for single Hush, and briefly appear in the following music video Sober, in which their faces could not be seen clearly, and their presence was not the focus of the video, but merely an addition. Adam Jones took the opportunity to express his artistic ideas through Tool's music videos. He was able to realize his vision due to his background of working at Stan Winston Studio as a sculptor and special effects designer, where he worked on some of the biggest Hollywood projects of that time. Adam designed props and had creative input for the band's music video Sober, the first single of Undertow. Second music video for Prison Sex, Adam directed himself. Both videos featured a stop-motion technique that used models created by Adam with some help from his former colleagues. Sober became a hit single by March 1994 and earned Tool's first award, Billboard's Best Video by a New Artist. While Sober dealt with problems of addiction, a subject that is explored several times on the album. Prison Sex did not reflect its title exactly, as most of Tool's work. The title was misleading. The song instead dealt with the subject of child abuse, more precisely with the cycle of abuse, meaning that abusers often are the abused. As a result, music video for Prison Sex was deemed too graphic, and MTV stopped airing it after a few showings. But this was not the only controversy of Undertow. The album was taken off the shelves at some of the largest stores in US for its explicit artwork, also done by Adam Jones. As a result, the album's artwork had to be changed. The cover was replaced with a barcode and was accompanied by a note from the band. It came to our attention recently that many stores across our fine and open-minded nation would not stock undertow because of our explicit artwork. Although we love being censored, we want your money. <laughs> We still want you to hear our music, so we took it out. However, it is available to you at no extra cost. Fill out the form, stick it in an envelope, mail it in, and we will send you the original artwork. Love, Tool. But even with these limitations, the album was certified gold in September 1993 and achieved a platinum status by 1995. The sales were also boosted by the support of comedian Bill Hicks. His first introduction to Tool happened when his name was put in the thank you section of liner notes of the album, where Hicks was mentioned as inspiration. Maynard was also doing stand-up comedy on his off nights. I love you. I love you. I love his money. I love you.
and the band overall shared a similar worldview with Bill Hicks. As a result, at the last concert of Lollapalooza in Sewell's hometown, Hicks did the honor of introducing the band. This significantly helped their publicity and album sales. Lacrimology, or the science of crying, came up on several occasions in Tool's interviews when asked about the concept of undertow. Ronald Vincent's approach to dealing with suffering and dealing with, with pain is, uh, I think it's kind of a universal thing that not everybody, a lot of people do it, a lot of people exercise it, but don't really know what it is. And uh, I think the reason that we were attracted to him is because it was something we were already doing in the way that we express ourselves and he just kind of had a word that described it and it was kind of a, an enlightening thing to have stumbled across someone who's been writing a book about something you've been doing all your life. Kind of laid out a whole process for it. Adam actually discovered lacrimology about a year before I met him in LA um, and he got a hold of a book and I ended up finding another copy in a small bookstore but we haven't been able to find any copies since and I think we're going to end up trying to put the book out because we can't find any copies out anywhere. Uh, check with the Library of Congress, it's not, even, it's not even registered, so I'm hoping that you know, nobody's going to come sue us when we release it. As for the rest of the tracks that were not released as singles, they dealt with a wide spectrum of issues apart from substance abuse self-confrontation and confrontation of others, abusive relationship and perhaps human nature. According to Maynard, the song titled Four Degrees comes from the fact that the anal cavity is four degrees warmer than the vaginal. However, the song is not of sexual context, but speaks of opening up emotionally. Track titled Flood may even have biblical implications of a person turning to religion at the time of desperation, which ultimately fails them. Closing track Disgustipated has many layers and touches upon topics such as religion, circle of life and morality. Some even connected to the promotion of vegetarianism and veganism, as the term disgustipated was first coined in a Popeye comic book in the 1930s and was used to express a combined feeling of disgust and exasperation. And since the conflicts were always resolved by Popeye eating spinach, we may assume that this song was intended to promote vegetarianism. The lyrics also imply that this is a likely possibility. thoughtful listener will always be wondering what exactly the artists are trying to say with their creations. But Tool didn't even include lyrics with the release of their music, because the concept of most work by Tool is to find your own meaning to each song, apply it to yourself, and resolve whatever it is you need to resolve, achieve whatever it is you are trying to achieve. Thank <laughs> you.